Uh, this is a financial accounting refresher for managerial accounting. This is not a lecture that's going to be uh, performed in class. Uh, this is only going to be recorded for Sakai. Uh, I also have a set of lecture notes that are also on Sakai for financial accounting refresher for managerial accounting. I'd like to remind you, as I reminded you in class, that I'm going to be giving a quiz on this material. So I suggest that you uh, listen to the entirety of this video lecture and look through the notes that I've provided you in preparation of that short quiz. Okay? Financial accounting refresher. Why do we need it? Why do we need to remember financial accounting? A couple of reasons. Number one, the very first chapter we cover in managerial accounting is going to be on the preparation of the statement of cash flows, which is a continuation of financial accounting. So we need to remember debits and credits, T accounts, and some transactions, specifically sale of an asset. Secondly, we're going to be talking about job order costing as part of managerial accounting. And again, we need to know debits and credits and specifically um, um, debits and credits that go through the manufacturing overhead account. And we're going to be looking at T accounts. So let's talk a little bit about the basic financial statements, okay? There are four financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement of retained earnings, and the statement of cash flows. In order to prepare the statement of cash flows, we need to have already prepared a balance sheet, which is what? Statement of assets and liabilities at a point in time, usually the end of a quarter, or the end of the year. Secondly, we need an income statement. Again, what is an income statement? Revenues and expenses arriving at net income. Revenues minus expenses equals net income for a period of time. For the one month ended, for the six months ended, for the 12 months ended for a period of time. The third financial statement that you've prepared is the statement of retained earnings beginning retained earnings plus net income less dividends paid equals ending retained earnings. And then the statement that we're going to work on for the next several classes, statement of cash flows. Those are the four major financial statements. So there are some skills that you need to have in order to be successful with the statement of cash flows. One of them is understanding how to record the sale of an asset. Sale of an asset. That was material we learned in financial accounting. And there are four steps, as you can see in my lecture notes here. There are four steps in the preparation of the journal entry associated with the sale of an asset. Step number one, record the cash received on the sale of that asset. Number two, remove the asset from the books of the company. Number three, remove the accumulated depreciation that is associated with that asset. And then lastly, step number four, record the gain or loss on the sale of that transaction. I have an example that I've provided you here. And it's example, sold equipment for $10 cash. The original cost was $400 and accumulated depreciation was $380 record the sale of the asset. So we're going to follow those steps that we just had. Step number one is what? Record the cash, increase in cash. So we're going to have a journal entry where right? we have debits and we have credits. We have a debit for cash. The amount of cash received on the sale of this piece of equipment was $10. Step number two, remove the old asset at its original cost. Now to increase an asset we need to debit it, but to decrease it we're going to credit it. So we're going to call this equipment and we're going to have a credit here for $400. That's the original cost of the asset. Step number three, remove the accumulated depreciation that's associated with that asset. And I told you that was $380, A slash D, accumulated depreciation. 
And step number four is to record the gain or loss in the sale of the transaction. Well, that's the difficult part. That's not the easy part. But what you want to remember, please, is that your debits have to equal your credits. So if we look at this transaction here, we've got 10 and 380. We've got $390 of debits, but we got $400 of credits. Debits equal credits. So we need to have um, $10 of debits to make this balance. And this is going to be the gain on sale of the asset. My journal entry balances, record the cash, remove the old asset, remove the accumulated depreciation, and lastly, record the gain of the loss. Let's prove the gain of the loss. So what did we receive? They received $10 on the sale of that asset. What did they give up? Well, they gave up an asset that also had accumulated depreciation associated with it. So the original cost of that asset was $400, but it had accumulated depreciation, less accumulated depreciation of 380. This asset had a book value, original cost minus accumulated depreciation of 380, had a book value of $20. Received 10, gave up something that was worth 20, they have what? They have a loss, don't they? They have a loss on sale. Not a gain. This is a loss. It's a debit, just like an expense. If it was a credit, if they had a gain, a gain would be a credit balance. Here, they have a loss on the sale. It's a debit, just like an expense. So not a gain on sale. It is a loss on sale. So let's remember, remember that transaction. Let's remember that journal entry. And let's take this a step further. And by the way, you should be pretty familiar. Again, this is a refresher. This is not new material. This is a refresher. So that should be very familiar to you from financial accounting. So I want to take it a step further. And I want to look at a couple of accounts. I want to look at the equipment asset account. The T account, and I want to look at the accumulated depreciation T account, two accounts you're very familiar with. And let's assume, for the sake of conversation, that there was a beginning balance in the equipment account of $1,000, and let's assume that there was an ending balance, beginning of year, ending year, if you will, of $700. And we remember the journal entry we just had, right? Sometime during the year, there was a sale of an asset. They received $10 for it. The original cost was $400. Accumulated depreciation was $380. They had a loss in the sale of $10. So sometime during the year, they recorded that sale. And when they recorded that sale, they posted right a credit to the equipment account for $400 which brought this balance down to what? $600. $600. Now you say, well, the ending balance is $700. But I ask you the question, what happened? Something happened here during the year. And what happened was that there were some purchases of what? Of new equipment of $100, resulting in what? $700 ending balance. So they had a preliminary balance after the sale of $600. They had an ending balance of $700. That means they must have had a purchase. Well, what was that journal entry to purchase? They had a debit and a credit, right? They had a debit to equipment, we just saw, of $100. And a credit to what? Likely cash of $100. Why is this important? Why are we going through this exercise? We're going through this exercise because we are looking for cash flows. Cash inflows and cash outflows. In this situation, in this particular journal entry, they purchased some equipment for what? For cash. Equipment went up. Cash went down. This here, this portion here, is an outflow of cash. We're going to be looking for these types of things when we prepare the statement of cash flows. That's important. Looking for cash inflows, cash outflows. This is a cash outflow. 
Let's look at our accumulated depreciation account. And again, let's make some assumptions here. Let's assume that there was a beginning balance of a thousand bucks. Remember, credit balance, right? Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, has a normal credit balance. At the beginning of the year, a thousand bucks. At the end of the year, 660 is the ending balance in that accumulated depreciation account. But we know that there was also what? There was a sale of an asset, and when they sold that asset, they had a journal entry that debited the accumulated depreciation account for 380, which brought our balance down to what? 620, our preliminary balance. Something happened. What happened? There was a journal entry in the course of the year. A credit for 40 bucks. What does that represent? Well, you remember from your financial accounting, there's only one journal entry that you're familiar with that increases the accumulated depreciation account, and that's when we record depreciation expense, right? So again, there was a debit and a credit. The debit was depreciation expense, for 40 bucks and a credit to accumulated depreciation for 40 bucks, right? That's the 40 bucks that went through that account. Again, why is this important? Why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because we, at some point in time, when preparing the statement of cash flows, will be looking for adjustments. Adjustments that convert net income on the accrual basis method of accounting to net income on a cash basis of accounting. Let's look at that journal entry. Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Is there an impact on cash? No. But there's what? An increase in an expense which does what? Drives down net income. This item right here, depreciation expense, is a non-cash expense for which we are going to make an adjustment, a non-cash expense. And we'll talk about this in class. Remember, please remember the definition of depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is the allocation of an asset over its useful life. Allocation of the cost of an asset over its useful life. Think about it. Straight line depreciation. Total cost. Minus salvage value divided by what? Useful life in years. Allocation of cost of an asset over its useful life. That is the definition of depreciation. Non-cash expense. Let's look at another skill that we need to know in our financial accounting refresher. We continue to look for cash flows, cash inflows, and cash outflows. Let's remember that there's a statement, a financial statement that's important to us, a statement of retained earnings. What does that show us? Statement of retained earnings is what? Statement of retained earnings beginning retained earnings plus net income from the income statement, revenues minus expenses, minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. In our quest to look for cash flows, we're going to be looking for dividends. Let's assume for a minute that we have an example. Beginning retained earnings is $1,000. Net income is $400, and ending retained earnings is $600. My question to you is what is dividends? How much dividends were paid during the year? Using the statement of retained earnings, we can find the answer to that question. Beginning retained earnings. 
$1,000 plus what? Net income, $400 equals what? Retained earnings available for distribution. Retained earnings are the accumulated earnings over the life of a company. Retained earnings belongs to the shareholders. So we have retained earnings available for distribution. Remember, dividends are the distribution of earnings to the shareholders. We have dividends available for distribution of 400. But we know ending retained earnings is 800. Therefore, what? Dividends is what? $800. Dividends paid, $800. Again, why is that important? We are looking for cash flows both in and out. This is an outflow of cash that you're going to have to find and you're going to have to use in the preparation of the statement of cash flows. So that is the financial accounting refresher as is needed for this class, looking for cash flows, looking for the purchase of property, plant, and equipment, equipment in this case, purchases. Number two, looking for non-cash expenses. In our case, depreciation expense. We found it by looking at the T account. And number three, we looked at the retained earnings account in order to find what dividends paid were. So that's your financial accounting refresher. Please understand these problems because they will be on a quiz. Thank you.